There's a weird report out about Kirk Cousins. I, I, there, there are times dudes put reports out that boggle my mind. This one comes from a reputable source because uh, I love uh, the guys over at uh, Pro Football Talk. Mike Flory and Chris Sims do a great job. So I do buy what they say, but the, the, the blood in the water in this one is that Kirk Cousins has already considered moving his family, he's got a couple young kids, to Atlanta. Uh, I guess his wife's from Georgia. Alpharetta. So I guess that makes some sense to me. Maybe she wants to go back home to support a family, all that. That makes sense to me. But it's now being correlated to, aha, Kirk Cousins is leaving Minnesota and he's going to go play for the Atlanta Falcons. The rub on Kirk Cousins is that if Minnesota doesn't trade him, and that's hard to do, all right, or re-sign him by March 13th, they got to eat. $28.5 million in dead cap money. So he's in play big time. Obviously, they would like to bring him back. But if you're Kirk Cousins and you're kind of taking stock of, I'm towards the end of my career. I've lived off these one- and two-year deals. I'm not quite sure what the Vikings have outside of Justin Jefferson and a good tight end maybe, right? The running back situation is a little murky. They got a couple young running backs there who might become really good. There might be other opportunities for me to play and play in the dome, play with better talent around me, and maybe give me an extra shot of getting into the playoffs and going deep. But Kirk Cousins, second to Russell Wilson, is absolutely in play. Yeah, you're 100% right. You also got to say the Vikings cut their running back uh, Madison yesterday. So that, that's troubling considering that they also haven't signed Justin Jefferson. But if you're Kirk Cousins, you got to understand you're 35 years old. You're coming off of kiddies. He's never been a mobile quarterback. So he's going to have to go somewhere that actually has an offensive line that has weapons. That's why Atlanta makes the most sense. And you talked about the wife situation. But for Kirk Cousins moving forward, he also has to realize, like, look, he, this is, he's playing the back nine in his career. Yeah. You have to go somewhere you're going to, you want to. He's also not going to be ready in September. No. Right. You know, so to me, and that's, right. you know, like when you're talking to a team like Atlanta and you're bringing a new head coach there and you're coming off a year in which you failed to make the playoffs in a bad division, am I going to now commit $35, $40 million a year to a guy that best case scenario is going to miss four to six weeks yeah. of the regular season? Because those four to six weeks, even though they're in a weak division, could end your season. You know, you go one and five, you know, that type of scenario. And Kirk Cousins comes in having not played in a year, yeah. not practiced with the guys. So Kirk Cousins, to me, makes a lot more sense staying put than he does a team going out there giving him big money. I was going to say that, Craig. Uh, you know, staying put, guaranteed money at 29. Mm -hmm. um, Minnesota still wants you, right? Yes, they do. They, they still want him. Why is he going to go somewhere else and try to make – his mark in Atlanta when you get guaranteed money in Minnesota and you can work out in the facility around your guys. They want you there. Yeah. And you're proven that you are a starting quarterback in Minnesota and you, you're proven that you could take them to that next level. Why are you going to Atlanta? I'm with you. Can I, I also I, make one obvious point here? And maybe it's early in the morning, so I'm just ahead of everyone because I've been up longer than most people <laughs> watching, this, watching this show. Right around now, in the dark. I just want to make sure that you understand this uh, from an Atlanta perspective because it fascinates me. The Atlanta Falcons, all right, did not want Lamar Jackson last year. They talked about it, and they decided, nah, we'll be okay with Desmond Ritter. We have no interest in Lamar Jackson. A. Exhibit B, if I may. The Atlanta Falcons said no to Bill Belichick coming in to run the organization because they've done such a great job <laughs> with their other hires over the last 30 years, all right? But they do want a 35-year-old yeah. quarterback making $35 million a year coming off a torn Achilles. There are some franchises mm -hmm. that don't deserve to win. Mm. They're one of them. Craig, I'm going to double you up. They also said no to Deshaun Watson, right? Bang! They also, yeah. they yeah. also yeah. had opportunity to draft Justin Fields. Yeah. Bang! So this is an organization <laughs> that realized we've been screwing up for a long time. <laughs> they picked so Kyle Beast at like number five and never gave him the ball. <laughs> and Bijan Robinson, they didn't like, really give him the ball. Yeah. It's crazy, right? Yeah. So you started this by saying it's a strange report because, you know, like I've been in the media business a long time, and this is odd to have mm. someone out there with very reputable reporters saying they're going to move their family to a place that they're rumored to play at before they sign the deal. You lose all your negotiation leverage. But there's a part of me that's thinking about it more being like, 
the family might just want to move to Atlanta. I mean, he's got little right. kids. You might just want to be like, you know, at the end of my career, even if I stay in Minnesota, maybe I've decided the best home base for my family is where my wife is from. Like the only the knucklehead I know that has ever decided to move his family to Minnesota is Greg, Greg Jennings. Jennings. <laughs> he's the only person that stayed in Minnesota. And I love Greg, but I didn't just want to scratch my head on that. <laughs> <laughs> Not Minnesota. Like, willingly said, "No, no, honey, Minnesota." Yeah. <laughs> well, when he was here, he showed us a ring. He couldn't see his front door. It was so much snow. I said, "If this is home, <laughs> the the other fallout quarterback wise, uh, which I find interesting, is that believe it or not." Uh, I'm going to say words that I never thought would go together in a sentence, and those words are bidding war, Baker Mayfield. Yeah, yeah. it's a real because thing. Because if you're the Denver Broncos, play this out for a moment, and you came this close to making the playoffs last year, where, as Jacoby pointed out, that late-season run where they started playing you know, really competent football. Obviously, they famously beat the Kansas City Chiefs, right? And you're Sean Payton, and you're saying to yourself, all right, it was all Russell Wilson's fault. I'm putting all the blame on him. He wasn't the right guy for how I like to run my, my offense. But Baker Mayfield might be the right guy to run my offense, right? Uh, and all of a sudden, Tampa, who re-signs Mike Evans yesterday to that two-year deal, which made me immediately think that's a lock that Baker Mayfield's going to re-sign there, and they're good at wide receiver and quarterback. But Baker hasn't signed yet. Yeah. So the Denver Broncos opening up a starting quarterback spot. Now, if I'm Baker Mayfield's agents, I put Tampa on hold, put them on ice for a little bit, and I want to hear what Denver's selling because that becomes a great situation for a guy like Baker Mayfield. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you talk about Baker, one thing for sure, that he's already talked about not taking a hometown discount. Like, he wants top dollar, especially coming off the season he had. This is why when you look at the Russell Wilson situation, and you say, hmm, if Russell's now being a bridge quarterback, and you know he's going to – hopefully sign for league minimum and he's going to eat the 30 he's going to take on the 39 million why wouldn't a destination like tampa be suitable for him because you got a good quarterback you already signed your big time receiver and tampa needs to add pieces to get yeah. back into contention to make this they're already in the middle of that kind yeah. of fray now if you say now nah, get russell wilson now you got mike evans add on to that defense you got to resign antoine winfield jr who's yep. a safety uh and who's a free agent now you can make things happen if you're tampa so listen baker wherever baker goes he i think wants baker's in money. play though uh, I, I, you know, yesterday I thought when we left here, it's obvious to me that Tampa resigns him. That's done. I'm sure they talked to Mike Evans about who his quarterback was yeah. going to be, and he had a really good year with Baker Mayfield. You know, had some, what 79 catches, over a thousand yards, you know, double-digit touchdowns. So I'm sure Mike Evans has at least a word in the room uh, based on his stature with Tampa Bay. But if I'm Baker Mayfield's reps, hang on, everybody. I just want to hear if Denver's on the phone. If Denver's on the phone, that changes the narrative of how much money. I swear to you, I'm a huge Baker Mayfield guy. Have been since he came out of college. I never thought I would say the words bidding war, Baker Mayfield, because <laughs> it just sounds so stupid. So, let me ask you a question. Will you ask yeah. anything so, you want. So, so you, like in basketball, you know, you get paid $40 million or, or $50 million, then you, you – up in age at 35, yep. 34 years old, your money come down to about 12, 14, 15 million dollars. In football, you're foot, uh, you you Baker Mayfield, and you're looking for that big deal. But mm -hmm. you're not. To me, he's not that 40, no, uh, 35 million dollar guy. He, would you think he was signed for 20, 25? Uh, it depends. I think, listen, coming off the year he just came off, he's going to try to maximize that market. I, I like, I, listen, I could see him going to Minnesota if things don't work out with Kirk Cousins. You're like talking he's, four years, 100 million bucks yeah. in that area. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's what you got. Yeah, that's quarterback. Right. I mean, but you, but I'm just saying that's, that's 20 a year. Or 25 a year. You know, I yeah. mean, that, I mean. The I'm, problem is if do you believe he can replicate what he did this year? That's right, the problem. That, that's Maybe. the problem. Bottom line that's is this, is Baker Mayfield's getting a multi-year deal for triple digit uh, yeah. millions of dollars. Right. He'll get a hundred plus million dollar deal. Hey there, thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.